Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place where you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into my Marvel and DC fan fiction universe, where in story both Marvel and DC have combined into one ongoing universe with multiple storylines. You can find all those storylines on Tiger Tales and Tiger Tales of Lost Stories, they have one specific playlist of all the storylines in, and today we're diving into a story which takes place across all different types of superheroes and supervillains, explaining what they are up to 48 hours before the two universes merged. So let's dive in. 48 hours before Union Day. Agent Anti-Venom. Flash Thompson sat there sipping a latte, sat outside of a cafe watching the crowd around him. Thanks for your help, Eugene. Glad we have someone with your skill set on the job, Agent Colson said in Flash's earpiece. No worries. Flash muttered. You are after sleeper Hydra agent. One of them gets away, this could end up being a massive serious issue, Agent Coulson reminded him. How about we stop talking now? Flash suggested. Rude, man. Very rude, Coulson retorted. Then he remained silent. Flash looked around. Then he made eye contact with a pale, creepy-looking figure. Before Flash could react, the man stood up and ran off. Flash bolted out of his chair. His actions caused his table to flip over. He ran after the man. The man moved with incredible speed. Flash had to actually use some effort to keep up with him. The man turned into an alleyway and jumped up really high into the air, landing on top of the roof in one single pound. Suddenly, white symbiote tendrils erupted from Flash's spine and hit the ground, which launched Flash into the air and he landed on the same roof as the tendrils retracted back into him. As Flash followed the individual across the roof, Flash pulled out one of his pistols and fired at the man, hitting him in the shoulder, but the man was not phased by the attack. They both hopped over to the next roof and Flash managed to lunge forward, tackling the guy to the ground. The man threw an elbow up and hit Flash in the face, knocking him off of him. Flash lashed out his arms and white symbiote tendrils exploded from his arm and hit the man and pulled him back then, as the tendrils retracted, the man turned around and threw a punch. Flash caught it, and both of them entered a dance of throwing punches and kicks. The man managed to hold his own very well. Flash pulled out two guns, and at the same time, the white symbiote tendrils came out of his shoulder and pulled out two more guns. Flash unloaded four clips from four guns at once into the man. His body sprayed blood everywhere. His body became filled with bullets. Then Flash watched as the man stood there and each bullet fell out of his body and each bullet wound healed rather quickly. Then the man roared at him. His body shimmered purple and then he exploded. Flash's body was encased with his anti-venom suit as he was thrown across the roof by the shockwave of the explosion. Agent Anti-Venom stood up and looked over at where the man once stood, and there was no sign of him. The blast radius was quite wide. Coulson, I found the sleeper assassin. He blew up. Agent Anti-Venom said into his communicator. What do you mean by he blew up? Coulson barked back. As in, he went bang. He has no more. He exploded. What do you want me to do? Spell it out for you? Agent Anti-Venom snapped. So he was carrying explosives? Coulson asked. More like he was the explosive. Agent Anti-Venom replied. Get back to the helicarrier. We need to do a mission debriefing now, Coulson told him. Flash Thompson stood at the holographic table with Coulson and Maria Hill. The table projected a 3D image in New York City, and red dots indicated the known locations of the Hydra sleeper agents. This guy didn't know what he was doing. His body was on a defensive fight-or-flight mode, and there was a strange purple shimmer to his skin before he went bang. Flash explained, I think it's safe to say these agents were going down as suicide bombers, and out of all of these locations, nothing screams immediate threat to Hydra, Maria said. I do not understand what their next move could be, Coulson sighed. Suddenly, one of the red dots went dead, and there was an explosion in the city. Coulson hit the keyboard, and a live feed appeared on the screen. A tower in the city was now up in flames, and people were screaming in pain and horror. Can I ask your help one more time? Coulson asked. Already on it. 
Flash responded. Then his anti-venom suit materialised around him and he ran out of the helicarrier and jumped off the edge and soared down to the city below. He shot a web and swung over to the city street and he reached the burning tower. He swung onto the burning building and scanned the area as quickly as he could. He found no one in immediate danger and no one any harm as the firefighters were there. He lashed out some of his symbiote tendrils and lifted some of the rubble that had collapsed due to the impact of the explosion. This wasn't an attack on this building. This building is a diversion. Scan the city. Something is going on. Agent Anti-Venom Bart. On it, Coulson replied. Agent Anti-Venom ran and jumped out of the window of the burning building and shot a web and swung away. Eugene, another sleeper assassin's location ping just went dead, Maria told him. Send me the location. I'm on the way. Agent Anti-Venom replied. Then he started swinging towards an abandoned warehouse. He landed on the ground and saw the building up in flames. There's no signs of any activity before the explosion, Coulson explained to him for the earpiece. This place is also a dead end. Agent Anti-Venom replied. It's looking like these aren't exactly assassinations, more like sleeper distractions, Maria Bart. They blow up two to three of abandoned buildings to rob a blood bank. Something ain't right here. Agent Anti-Venom growled, I think I have something. Three buildings. Big buildings have explosions. What's the two things that come next? Ambulances and fire trucks, making it so all of the donation ports are left unattended. Well, there is a blood donation going down right now. The police radio says that there is a robbery happening with black suited gas mask wearing gun wielding thugs, Coulson explained. I'm on it. Agent Anti-Venom snapped as he shot a web and left the burning warehouse for the firefighters to deal with. The blood donation workers were on their knees as Hydra soldiers started piling up the bags of blood into a van. Agent Anti-Venom landed and punched a Hydra soldier, knocking the wind out of him. His symbiotic tendrils came out of his shoulder and snatched the guns out of the soldier's hand. And then he flipped backwards, pulling out all four guns at the same time once again. With multiple bullets, he shot the soldiers down. The last one jumped into the van and started to drive off. Agent Andy Venom shot two webs, which both hit the back of the van. Symbiote tendrils came out of his legs and buried themselves into the ground, securing himself on the spot. Then Agent Andy Venom pulled as hard as he could. The van halted on the spot, its tires spun uncontrollably and started to smoke, till the engine made a popping noise and the van stopped. The Hydra soldier cl climbed out of the van and fell to the ground. Agent Andy Venom shot a web, sticking the soldier to the ground. Agent Andy Venom turned to the hostages and helped them to their feet. Coulson, donated blood is secured and the hostages are safe. Agent Anti-Venom said into his communicator. Good job, Eugene. The other buildings that exploded have been secured. Thanks for the assistance, Coulson told him. I want to know why Hydra needed to steal donated blood. Agent Anti-Venom stated. Yeah, you and me both, Coulson replied. Then Agent Anti-Venom walked up to the end of the path and looked up to the sky. His mask retracted and Flash allowed the soft, gentle breeze to touch his face. He looked up into the sky and a massive burst of light exploded. A massive portal appeared in space. It could be seen in the sky. It was so big, it took up half the sky. Yo, you guys seeing this? Flash barked in his communicator as he watched Iron Man leave the atmosphere and approach the new and unexplained portal that took up half the sky. A big shout out to A-Crown for voicing Flash, a.k.a. Agent Anti-Venom. Please make sure you check out the rest of the stories within the Marvel and DC fanfiction universe here on Tiger Tales and Tiger Tales The Lost Stories.